Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Vispi. Today I'm super happy to be with you because we're going to do another beautiful activity inspired by the fall, inspired by pumpkins and inspired by Halloween. This time we're going to add a touch of spookiness. So if you're into that, this is a perfect practice for you. We're going to use very simple and basic materials and I will give you also alternative in the description box, but also why we do the practice together. So you always can stretch, twist, change the practice according to your personality, artistic personality, and on the supplies that you have available. For this practice, I will use my Mixed Media Journal. You can use your journal. If you don't have a journal, as I always say, grab a Mixed Media paper if you have a pad. If it's a big pad, divide the pages in a half so you don't have to do something too big and you can definitely commit to the practice and finish what you started, which is basically my almost only rule that I have. Then I will use my a couple of Sharpies. You can use Sharpies, black alcohol markers, any brand that you have available, or if you don't have them, even a regular black markers. I will use a regular tip and a fine tip. And then I will use watercolors. So first practice of the season was with just watercolor. Second practice for, for the season was just with markers. Today, we're going to combine them together. If you want to do this practice just by using all markers, go for it. It's going to be incredible and it's going to turn out amazing. Nevertheless, this is the perfect activity for learning how to draw a three-dimensional pumpkin so that will really satisfy you and your artistic, you know, personality much better. Uh, it's definitely easy to follow, so perfect for kids, your grandkids, you do it together, you do it on your own. You can create a series of these uh, pumpkins, maybe changing a little bit the background colors, and then you can cut them out and use them to decorate your windows or your house. As I say, I try my best to offer practice so that we can be stretched, twist, change. And, you know, you can, from one video and one tutorial, you can actually have a multiple products. So I'm going to use, as I say, my, you know, mix and media journal, which is already on my table. So get yourself set, prepare your supplies. It's going to switch the camera and we can do this practice together. Okay, friends, this is my journal and it's ready. And as usual, we are going to reframe the space. You can do it with a ruler or you can just do it by hand as I'm doing it, just go slow. And if the line are not perfect, it's totally fine. If you're using a big piece of paper, reframe it for you, cut it in a half, do whatever you need to do. So you're gonna kind of reduce the space and you don't feel overwhelmed that you have a huge pumpkin. So if you wanna do it big and huge because you have extra time, go for it. Now, the first step that we have to do for drawing a nice pumpkin is always the oval in the center. It doesn't have to be a perfect oval, of course, it's going to be more like a flat on the bottom, but this is going to give you the position of your pumpkin, the size of your pumpkin, so it's the first element that we start with, okay? Then look what I do carefully. I'm going to kind of build a couple of a curved line here, let's say that we're giving it, I don't know, ears or something or antennas, and then we are going to go up and we are going to use this as our stem, okay? The stem is going to help you to guide you for the other section of the pumpkin. So we're going to do our second one, same line that we did first, but we just don't close and we make it a little shorter. You see, they don't end up on the same plane. This is how we will call it, but a little shorter. Then we do the same on the other side and we close it. Now we start, and this time we're not going to start here, but we're going to start from the stem and we do the same type of beautiful curved line and we close it even shorter. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. These are very easy steps that everybody can learn regardless of the age, of the skill level and everything, and it's going to make your pumpkins look great. Now, pretend that there is a point here, right? And you're going to start to develop the one that goes in the back. And because it's on the back, we won't be able to see it. And then one other side and maybe also one here. We're going to raise these dots that we don't need. And this is your, your beautiful three-dimensional pumpkins. Now, I'm going to paint my pumpkins. This time I'm going to use a pretty nice orange. 
traditional. We're not gonna do any shading like we did for the first one because we're not doing a realistic type of pumpkin. So that is not the goal of this activity, but we just wanna spread nicely our watercolors. Of course, they will give us some value because of the water. You will have some more saturated, intense and darker spot and some lighter spot, which is exactly what we want. It's beautiful. So try to do something that is nice, smooth and cohesive. Every time that you feel that your brush is getting too dry, you're gonna pick water. Again, the color, we want something nice and bright. And now, very nice and carefully, we're going to go up and down to fulfill the spaces that we have with the, the watercolor. This is definitely will take less then color with the markers and it will give you the opportunity to review a couple of different techniques, right? So some skills are required to use watercolor, understanding the amount of water, the brush should never be too dry, but in a case like this, when you wanted to fulfill a specific space, should never be too wet either, right? Because you don't want to have the water uh, kind of watering too much the colors and bleeding all over the page, right? We want to control it so we are able to fulfill the space that we want. If you have a little accident that you put a little too much water, it is okay. Finish that section, let it dry, and then remember that we're going to do some work on top with the black marker so you will be able to um, camouflage that mistake, okay? And at the end, you won't even be able to see it anymore. Remember that we can, we don't start over, we don't, you know, toss what we did, we finish what we started, we work on it, we fix it, we make changes, and then we know exactly what to do differently, maybe another time, if anything. With watercolor, it's also much faster, right? We just need to uh, wait a little bit, probably a couple of minutes, nothing more. Unless you use too much water or a little more water that I'm using, you might need five minutes. It will dry and then you will be able to work on the surface with the markers. Just tap it with your hands and let's make sure that it's always 100% dry because otherwise, not only you can maybe ruin the markers, it's not gonna work, but most of all, you can actually break the paper. And we don't want that. So nice and careful. We're gonna fulfill the part on the back. If you see some spots that you wanna go over, you can kind of dry and clean your brush. And this is our pumpkin salt painted and now we're gonna wait for a couple of minutes as I say to let it dry okay friends my pumpkins is dry and as you see as you notice I was touching to see if it was dry and it wasn't over here so I got some you know orange a little bit everywhere so this is how we're gonna fix in the way that the orange will disappear into our black pattern and this is also a beautiful example of how we can fix something without starting over without panicking without hating that mistake it is just a part of the, the mistake so i'm using a regular part of the project sorry i'm using a regular tip sharpie and i'm gonna do the outline of my stamp then i'm gonna switch it to an extra fine and i'm gonna start it with this beautiful busy pattern done with very close lines and even if you will see a little bit of the orange in the background is actually barely visible and it's still extremely pretty and as you see that little mistake will blend into the whole project and will be part of it part of the personality of this little spooky optical illusion 3d pumpkin now because i have the extra fine i'm gonna proceed very carefully i'm gonna do the outline of the pumpkin sessions sections 
my English English. Don't press hard on the paper, even if it's completely dry. Remember that it's already treated, you know, we already used water on it. So it's definitely a little more sensitive and delicate. If you press too hard, you can break the paper. We don't want that. Also, it's a good, and I know that it will take some time. So I see with my students where you are a beginner, it will take some time for you to learn how to release the pressure of the hand on the paper so you actually can move uh, uh, better. Nice, and there you go. We can, now with the same Sharpie, if you don't feel sure, you don't wanna do with the Sharpie, use the pencil first and then Sharpie on top. We're gonna create biomorphic shapes, which are circle shovelish, you know, any shapes that you can imagine. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be all the same size or position. They don't want, they don't need to be geometric at all, just spots. We're gonna prep our pattern now. And this is a video, is inspired by a video that went viral some times ago about this type of optical illusion that create the illusion that you have a multi-layer surface. With a double pattern, one on the surface and one underneath. Now for the shape, of course, the follow the size of the space that you have to fulfill, right? Be creative, let it go. They can be small, big, a little bit on different direction. There you go, you're gonna have fun. Gonna maybe do, I would say, one coming out here, one here, no one in that one because it's too little, and then maybe one here like this. Perfect. Now we're gonna put this away. We're gonna go back to our regular markers just because it's gonna allow us to go a little like faster, and always very gently, we are going to. Feel the space around those spots with the black. Now, some of you might say, oh, we could have done first the design, just paint inside. You can do that if you're using markers. You can do the pumpkins with the pencil. You can do the biomorphic shape. You can color with the marker inside, and then you're going to do the black. But if you're painting a like I did because I wanted this specific tester, I suggest you to do it entirely. First, because it's actually technically better and easier to fulfill the entire space of the pumpkins that go inside the shape because you won't be able to go smooth inside the shapes, but you will have to follow a little bit that specific shape, right? Of this biomorphic pattern. And I think that it just doesn't look like this one. I just feel that this one is a little better. So it's sometimes in art that we have to take the little extra steps, the little extra work in order to have the best result. But as I say, you can try differently. This is a technique that worked for me. Doesn't mean that it has to work exactly identically for you. Find your own, uh, ask your own questions, find your own solution, right? And then you will know what works better for you. It is important uh, when you work uh, with the black uh, that you stay outside of this biomorphic shape. So a good way to do it is that you can outline them again and then go between uh, the gaps. 
if an accident happened, what you will do, you will reshape that shape a little bit because we want them to be pretty like accurate. I also really like the texture of the black Sharpie on top of the cardboard. It's, sorry, the watercolor, what am I saying? Watercolor will texture the paper. And this one is not watercolor paper, it's mixed and media paper. Now, if you want very precisely, you can leave a little orange space that you won't fill with the black between the pumpkin section. So you will still see the different section of the pumpkins the central one so now it's nice and slowly we're gonna fill the space being careful not to go inside that tiny little stripe of orange that we left if you feel that a tiny the extra fine sharpie is better for you because you want to be you know maybe you can be more precise with that. You can definitely use that. It's gonna take you a little longer to fulfill the space just because the tip of the marker, it, it's a little, you know, thinner. And so we release uh, thinner strokes. But once again, it's really up to you. I want you to feel comfortable in following along with me, but making the little changes that might facilitate your practice, right? We're gonna keep going once again. We're gonna try our best to leave a little orange stripe thin, so you have to go extremely slow. Nice. If by accident you feel this space is not a big deal, the pumpkins will look great. The pumpkin will look great at the end. You know, it's, it's okay. Mostly if you're a young artist, you're a fair kid, doing this practice by yourself or with your parents or grandparents, remember that it's a learning process, right? We pay attention and we try our best and we focus on the new techniques and skills that we are learning. And then if a little accident happened, it is okay. We're gonna accept it as a part of the learning process. We try our best to fix it and the next following time we'll know better because we are more trained right if you like this type of this style and i bet that you will because it's gonna be really really nice you can do multiple pumpkins now that you know the steps and the technique you can do some bigger some smaller right you can do them all with markers or you can do them with watercolors and markers, whatever works better for you. And then you can cut them out and you can use them to decorate your house for Halloween. You can put them like hanging on the windows or maybe in your room. It's like a, they are so light and easy to cut because they're made out of paper. It could be mixed media paper, watercolor paper, and they are easy to cut, easy to hang them around, to tape them. So it's nice. You could have like a, you could do a pumpkin for each of the color of the color wheel, for example. The coloring with the black, this part is probably the most tedious, if I want to, you know, I, I'm enjoying it. So for me, it's pleasure, but I know that we're all different. So some of us can feel some frustration. It's just that you have to go around those shapes. You need to leave that little orange. So you really need to pay attention to what you do. You need to use the small strokes 
and you need to make sure that you're fulfilling all the gaps and you're adding this beautiful almost shiny coat because the sharpie on top of the watercolor it's like a, as i say you don't you might not notice from the videos but it does give you a texture so we need to kind of proceed one more we go down slow with this line parallel to the line that we used to trade the session of the pumpkin. So we're going to fulfill the space, leaving that nice space, a nice separation between the slices of the pumpkin. So growing up in Italy, Halloween was not a thing, you know. I learned about Halloween when I was still in Italy, but definitely because we got a lot of influence from American TV show and American culture, right? But it was most definitely when I was already in college. We have a different calendar, so we celebrate the carnival. We don't celebrate Halloween. And when we came in the United States instead, you know, it's a pretty big celebration, regardless the states that you you know you live in at that point i feel that my best halloween were in north carolina and both of my kids were still kids mostly the youngest one and you know for him it was a big thing trick or treating the you know the the costumes and everything and i really started to learn more and more about the celebration and embracing it more and it was beautiful i'm glad that, that we learn about it and we embrace it now our beautiful pumpkins look how cool it looks already like that so we're gonna go back to our extra fine markers my extra fine sharpie and now we're gonna do the beautiful very um, rounded and curved lines that we use for many other of our patterns okay i'm gonna choose basically a direction a different direction for each of the uh, slice of the pumpkin so the section of these pumpkins you need to go slow the better are those lines so the closer are together the more regular is their shape the strongest is going to be the final optical illusion i'm going to turn the journal a little bit sometimes so just because i want you to be able to see properly and i need to feel comfortable in tracing those lines because they need to be well done. So go slow. One technique that sometimes I tell my students, if it's difficult for you to do them very close to each other from the beginning, you can create them, separate them, so you like spread them, and then you, you fill the space. Let's say that you put one here and one here, and then you can go back and fill the spaces between them. Maybe it could be easier. Okay, so try both ways and use the technique that works better for you. These are not big spaces, so you might be able to just do one line at a time as close as possible to each other with no issue at all. And remember that this is a handmade pattern, so the lines, if they squiggle a little bit, if some of them might touch, it's totally fine, actually better. Now, because this is a meticulous work and it's gonna take some minutes, if you need to take your break, if you need to pause, if you wanna leave the activity 
you know, if you want to break them in two, for example, one day you design, you do the big pattern, and then the following day you will do these smallest final patterns, you can definitely do it. My videos are available for you 24-7 at your convenience, so you can watch it maybe speeding up the the speed of the video and then practice at your own time once you know exactly what to do or you can practice with me and just you know re-watch the video twice or divide the video in half whatever works better one done now this one i'm gonna start from the opposite direction And these one are also smaller, right? So the big, big, big part, the more challenging is done. So we can kind of keep having fun, relaxing a little more. And I also want to say, do not underestimate the power of repeating the same simple gesture, like a simple curved line over and over, because it's going to have a huge impact on the, the the design but also it's going to give you the opportunity to work on your fine model skills repeating the gesture over and over this one will add the same direction that this one has maybe i'm gonna turn that over here so it's like a training for a sport right or you're training for a marathon you need to run distance longer times right so the more you do it the better you become and the more prepared you will be this is exactly the same these are fine motor skills and brain hand coordination skills so the more you give yourself the opportunity to train those skills and the more you expose yourself right to that training at the repetition the better you will be and then when you need your lines because you want to draw or design something, you will really see a huge improvement and a really different type of accomplishment also. So, yes, I know at the end that you will be tracing hundreds, if not thousands of lines. I don't know how many, we should count them but it's gonna be worth it. Two more done. Now we're gonna start with this one, opposite direction. So I'm going to go back in doing it. Actually, I'm gonna start from the top. Because we are using such a like a, a massive a black a pattern, I would say that whatever color you use to paint the background of the pumpkins, now we use orange today, which is incredibly beautiful um, in the contrast with the black. And it's also, as I say, was like very Halloween. Uh, but I would say that any color will look great with the black, probably the only color a couple colors that it would not do it is extremely dark blue or extremely dark purple because at that point you won't have that contrast anymore but if you use an electric ultramarine blue and if you use a very strong and warm violet you will still have a beautiful contrast so it depends of what type of tint 
and tones you use of the blue if you go darker of course your uh, contrast with the black will vanish right and instead we want it to be really evident but i'm thinking now i'm i'm picturing the same pumpkins here with the red with yellow with lime green green turquoise ultramarine blue beautiful you know and all of this black double pattern And look how cool is the optical illusion of something that is coming out, something that is receding at rhythm and movement. And this spooky pumpkin has all the personality. It has character. How beautiful it is. Now we have this final one so this one will go this way this one probably will do two lines here this one tiny tiny and this one will go this way as well oh my goodness it's so beautiful now we're gonna go back to the black thick sharpie I'm going to do my beautiful frame just to define this space more. Now, we have option for the background, but we don't want to do something that would take away the attention from our main pumpkins. So if we do a very busy background, we risk to compete with this already busy and beautiful optical illusion pattern that we created in the pumpkin. So what I would say and what I would do, I will go back with my friend's watercolor. You can do any color that you want. If you want to go complementary to orange, you have a blue. It could be all dark blue over here and it will create a beautiful contrast. So if you want to make it really, really moody and dark, you can go with the gray or with the black. Just if you go with the black, the watercolor will be a lighter black than this one. So don't worry about it. You will still be able to... Um, to really see the pumpkins probably i'm going to go with the blue i'm gonna dark it up with some black so i mix in some black and some pretty dark blue i need to dip in the water several times and then carefully with not too much water i'm gonna be very gentle when i'm around the pumpkins And if I wanted to light it up a little bit, I will just spread it, dip in the brush in the water, nice and moody. You can do your own, as I say, think about the color wheels. We did many practice about the color wheels, blue and orange. I love the way that they are together because they are complementary on the color wheel, which means that they sit in opposite side and they complement each other by contrast, right? I instead to use a light blue, I wanted something a little darker and spookier. So I'm mixing some black watercolor with the ultramarine. So I had this beautiful dark and moody blue, like a song by Elvis Presley and a band from the 60s, 70s, if I am correct. Yes, the moody blue. Here we have our moody blue, guys. And the beauty of the watercolor that they will always give you, right? Different value, darker and lighter. You can play, you can spread it. If you want to see more texture, you can do the strokes. So many things, right? So many options, so many ways to be creative. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. 
control the amount of water. Of course, you want a generous amount because you want to be able to smoothly move your brush, right? It should not be something, uh, it should not be a struggle. You should barely touch the paper and then move the brush around and it will spread the color. You don't want it too much because you don't want the color to bleed inside the pumpkins or outside the frame. And also remember, if you're using a mix and media paper like I am, of course, a good quality mix and media paper would definitely hold the watercolor and any other wet media, but it's not exactly like a watercolor paper. So we're going to make sure that we don't break the paper. Now a little bit of white, a little darker here. So with the watercolor, you can go back on top to make it darker. I want to see some nice texture, so I don't mind to see some nice uh, brush strokes, right? Look how beautiful. Gonna dark it up a little bit of black, a little bit of blue. Nice. And I love the fact that the here instead is gonna be lighter. So I'm gonna actually just take a little bit more of this blue, go in just lightly and carefully over this side little bit of water once again only blue i'm not taking the black anymore now just the water and then i spread this one once again one more time on top of this beautiful And I really love it and I love, I will leave this side lighter. I will let it dry completely and that's it. I'm going to switch the camera so we can say goodbye. Okay, friends, we did it again. And this time is absolutely stunning. It's still not dry, but look how pretty, beautiful. I love the pattern, the optical illusion, double pattern, double layer, and this moody blue dark blue black background and remember practice with me like my video subscribe to my channel share videos and ask me to join our facebook group part with miss b i can't wait to see all of your beautiful colorful pumpkins that you have been creating with me this october and i will give you another appointment for next week for one last practice inspired by october and particularly Halloween. That will be perfect for everybody, once again, because I try my best to do my practice, uh, you know, for every level, every age, every art experience, and using very simple media that are easy and affordable for you. So I hope that you like this practice as much as I did. I cannot stop looking at this pumpkin, honestly. I just love it. And I will see you all very soon. Ciao a tutti!